Good morning. Let's get it. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm excited to teach this morning. As usual, come on in. Let's get this thing started. Good morning, good morning. Thank you all for logging in. And I see um, my IG family coming in. I see my inner peace family, community, family, friends. Always excited to share uh, truth that I think will be a blessing to you. I'm very sensitive to the spirit according, uh, you know, as it relates to the things that I teach. And so um, I will continue to teach as God gives me um, and what he gives me to give you. Good morning. I see all of you. Come on in here. And um, I certainly did not come on here to talk about uh, Corona. God is working that out while people are still trying to figure it out. But I will say continue to do what the uh, professionals tell you to do. This is not a time to party. But it is a time to quarantine. Quarantine is another word for um, another word for um, for being set apart, sanctified. And I want you to, uh, while you are coming in here, I want you to go ahead and turn to uh, Revelation, and I'm going to give you our verse that we're going to start with uh, this morning. I am picking back up as it relates to unveiling the mysteries of Babylon. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. Th this lesson will um, probably be a tough lesson to follow because it's new information. Um, I've been studying and I've been asking God to reveal to me what the people need. I don't I don't want to give you what you want. I want to give you what you need. That's what I've been called to do. I know some things sound um, sound better when it's what you want to hear. Uh, but what I want to do, I want to unlock some things. I want to unlock some things that will give you more understanding as it relates to the word of God, as it relates to uh, your future, our future and the things to come. If we don't know, if we don't know and study the word of God, then when things hit, we will be ill prepared to handle those things. And so as God begins to reveal his word to you, it will give you what you need, not just for uh, the day that we're living in, but also in times to come. A lot of people have been in church, but really don't have church in them, you know, so um, you need the word. You need the word. And uh, there are still so many mysteries that need to be unlocked for the children of God. And so I want you to turn with me to Revelation eighteen twenty four. And we'll read that here in a moment. And I also want to send a shout out to uh, the ministers uh, who are still locked in and who know that you never allow your pastor to log in and preach without praying for him or her. You know, you always pray for your leader, you know, and some people are so used to being inside of a building that they still cannot follow protocol uh, outside of a church building setting. That is religion and not relationship. When you have a relationship with people, you still do what you're supposed to do and what you've been called to do even outside of a, a sanctuary. And I believe that God has us out of a building for a reason. God is trying to teach us that, yeah, we love going into the building to have church, but you still have to continue to be the church even outside of a building. You know, so... Um, as it when it when it's concerning spiritual things, you always want to make sure that the person who's bringing you the word of God is prayed up and 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 ready and prepared 
and their mindset is right to give you and to feed you what God has fed them. You know, so that's very important. Always pray for your leaders and for the people who are teaching you the word of God. Don't let them just log into um, the live or to teach and you haven't sent a prayer. So I'm giving God praise for those of you who send prayers to me um, before I preach. I actually read those prayers out loud and then um, then I proceed to teach from there. Good morning to each of you, those of you who are logging in. Uh, good morning, IPC. I miss you all. And I thank God for our community and those of you who are just hungry for the truth. Amen. So um, I'm going to talk about unveiling the mysteries uh, of, of Babylon today, and which is a continuation of what I started a few weeks ago. Uh, we had that Easter Sunday and, and God changed my message to talk about resurrection but now it's time for me to get back on uh, track and to give you um, what I need to give you this morning. Uh, so Revelation 18, 24, I'm going to read this verse and then I'm going to pray and then I'm going to commence to teaching. You know, so uh, I pray that you do have uh, a notepad and pen because some of the information that I'm going to give you is going to be <clears throat> worth jotting down because it's going, like I said, it's going to unlock some things for you. And I know that many of us are tired of just going to church and hearing somebody tell us what we want to hear and telling us things that God is not saying, you know. So um, it, it's just time for the truth to free God's people. The scripture says that the, that the truth will make you free. And we've been talking about uh, stay woke and and, and, and be free and all of that stuff. And the only way you can be free and get free and stay free is through and by the word of God. You know, so uh, Revelation 18 and uh, 24, uh, while you're turning there, I pray for those who are um, who are suffering from the coronavirus. I pray for those families who are still trying to recover from the tornado that hit I pray for those who have lost loved ones. I pray for those incarcerated. I pray for those who are going through right now. I just need you to understand that God has not forgotten about you. So, um, and we continue to lift you up in prayer. Revelation 18, 24 says this, and in her, talking about Babylon, was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. You know, so we have been talking about fleeing uh, Babylon uh, a couple of weeks ago, God is trying to pull you and me out of a system of oppression. He's trying to pull us out of a system of oppression, trying to uh, save us from uh, things that could potentially hurt us, hurt our future and hurt the future of our, our families. And so let us pray first. Father, we thank you this morning for waking us up. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We give you honor, praise and glory for what you are doing in this season in our lives. God, we thank you for allowing us the um, the opportunity to quarantine, to get ourselves together and to prepare for uh, this last round, God. We pray that you will continue to keep our minds fixed on you and keep us uh, open and available to receive new revelation from you, God. We thank you for the word of God, which is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We pray that you will continue to uh, download and that you will continue to impart into us the wisdom that we need to live in this day and time that we are in. We know that you said in this life, we will have tribulations. We will have troubles. Uh, things will happen, but you will uh, give us the strength and the power that we need to overcome it all. So we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, who gave his life for us. We pray God that you will continue to allow us to come into more truth uh, truth that will open up our minds, truth that will give us understanding as it relates to your word of God. I pray that you would also remind us that we are the local ecclesia. We are the church. We are the called out ones. It is not just about gathering in a building, though we do love to assemble. And, and though you have called us to assemble, God, we, we, we say this morning that we are still having church. You are still on the throne. You are still God. And we are not operating in a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. We thank you, God, for blessing us 
even in this state that we're in, because we know that it's only by your mercy and your grace that we are still alive today. I believe, God, that somebody needs a touch from you today. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody needs to be touched. Somebody needs to be moved toward you, God. I pray that you would supply every need according to your riches and glory, God. We will continue to look to the hills from which comes our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. And we also will continue to proclaim that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper and that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We thank you for covering us. We thank you, God, for keeping us. We thank you, God, for leading and guiding us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, God. We ask for forgiveness of sin today because we do uh, say that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but your word says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray that you will create within, within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit with within us, God. And so we just ask that you would give us what we need today and we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray for our economy. We pray for every pastor who's standing in the gap for you this morning. We pray, God, that you just have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So um, unveiling the mysteries. Good morning to those of you who are just logging in. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we, t this morning we're talking about unveiling the mysteries of, of Babylon. And as I just read to you from Revelation 18, 24, uh, that the scripture says, and in her, we're talking about Babylon, in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. I have explained to you for, uh, for the past couple of weeks that Babylon is a system that um, a system of oppression. It is a system uh, that um, that is actually shedding blood. It is a system that is actually shedding blood and the people who are shedding blood in this system are the saints uh, and the prophets. And it's because God has not called us to this system, but God has called us from a system of oppression. So we have to be uh, be sensitive to what the spirit is saying, especially in this season. We are approaching end times and a lot of people don't want to hear Hear that, but it's the truth. All the prophecies and everything uh, is lining up and things are happening exactly the way the scripture says that things will begin to unfold. But I need you to get this, that God is calling us out of something and he's calling us to something. Because as a child of God, I need you to understand that you have been set apart. And uh, the words, the term set apart, it simply means that you have been sanctified. It means that God has chosen you uh, he has chosen you for himself. He has set you apart because he has plans and intentions for your life. And so in order to understand uh, God's plan for your life and his intentions for you, you have to be willing to hear what he's saying and be sensitive to where he's guiding you. And so he's calling you once again out of a system and he's calling you um, to be set apart so that he can use you for his glory. And so we talked about revelation and we define what the word revelation means. A lot of people are afraid to look in the book of revelation. They don't want to read it because they don't really want to hear what's in it. Uh, and I explained to you a couple of weeks ago that the word revelation, it simply means reveal. It means to unveil. It means to reveal. And I also told you that there is no S on revelation. It's, it's revelation. And I showed you in Revelation chapter one, verses one through three, that the, the book of Revelation is about revealing and unveiling who Jesus is. You know, so those of you who are in Christ, you, you don't you have no fear of reading the book of Revelation because the book is really just pointing you and showing you who Christ is going to be to you during these end times. And so. I want to continue to define the word Babylon because there are some key things that I need to sh uh, show to you and I need to reveal to you today that's going to give you a better understanding of, of, of the Bible and especially um, of the table of nations in Genesis chapter 10, which a lot of people have a lot of questions about. And let me just go ahead and, and put a pin there and say this. There are a lot of you who have questions concerning the Bible. There are a lot of you who have questions about your identity and who you are. When the truth of the matter is that for many years we have avoided a lot of tough conversations and we, uh, you know, to just to preach what people want to hear. But there are a lot of people in this world and especially in the city that we live in. Uh, most of us are a lot of us are from Chattanooga, Tennessee. There are a lot of questions that people have. And God has chosen me to be one of those people uh, who's going to be able 
uh, to uh, to face this challenge and start answering a lot of the questions that people have. You know, because if we are reading the Bible and we are studying the Bible and we don't see ourselves in it and we can't find ourselves in it or the identity of who we are as a people uh, is covered up, then it makes the Bible less interesting to us because we don't want to read a story about somebody else. We want to read about, you know, about who we are and, and find out where we are in the scriptures. That's very important. And and this is not this is not about a. Uh, uh, elevating, you know, somebody or downgrading anybody else. You don't have to, you don't have to downplay somebody else, uh, in order to, uh, learn about yourself, you know? So, uh, here it is. Uh, I'm going to start out with defining, uh, Babel and the word Babylon. Um, and I want you to write this down. The Hebrew, uh, word for Babylon is Babel, B-A-B-E-L. And I'm going to give you this key information because it's going to lead to some other things. So it may be a little bit boring, but um, but I, I'm in a teaching mode. I want you to have understanding because it is the truth that makes you free, not entertainment. OK, so uh, the Hebrew for for Babylon is Babel, B-A-B-E-L. And the Greek is Babylon. Hebrew is Old Testament. Greek is New Testament. OK, and Babylon is a major city in central Mesopotamia. I need I need you to hear me because I'm going to break this all down. And it is situated between two rivers, the river Euphrates and Tigris. Euphrates and Tigris. I'm getting ready to give you some key information. Stay locked in and keep writing. No matter what you do, keep writing. The uh, Euphrates River and Tigris River is situated in Middle East. Situated in Middle East. Middle East has not always been called Middle East. At one point, it was called North Africa. At one point, it was called North Africa. So when we're talking about Euphrates and Tigris and we're talking about Babylon, we're talking about a surrounding area that is situated around Africa. That's key. That's going to be key in learning and studying the Bible. Now, I want you to turn to Genesis 2, Genesis chapter 2. God has called me to a remnant of people to give this understanding to. And if you stay with me, you're going to learn something, I promise. Genesis chapter 2, the, 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 the name Genesis means book of beginnings. It means book of beginnings. And so in order to understand what's in the middle and what's toward the end, it is essential that you go back to the book of beginnings. You can't learn the end and know what's in the middle if you never go back to the beginning. And going back to the beginning, it takes time and it takes patience. You have to be willing to study the word of God so that you won't be blind to what he's saying. So if you look at Genesis chapter two, verse 10, I see some of my students on here from school. It's good to see Miley and May. It's good to see you. OK, here it is. Now, a river flowed out of Eden, out of Eden. Now, I need somebody to type Eden in E-D-E-N. We always talk about the Garden of Eden. A, a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden. And from there, it divided and became four rivers. OK, there are four rivers that were divided from the one river that ran through Eden. And I'm getting ready to tell you what those four rivers are. This is going to be key because now you're getting ready to, to also learn where Eden was situated. And once you know where Eden was situated, then you can move forward from there. We, the first river, the first river 
It's called Pishon. Pishon River. P-I-S-H-O-N. It flowed around the whole land of Havala, where there is gold, delium, and onyx stones. Y'all see it in the scriptures. It's in verse 12. The second river is called Gihon. G-I-H-O-N. It flowed around the whole land of Cush. It flowed around the whole land of Cush. I need you to write Cush in the comments. Cush. C-U-S-H. Cush is also known or identified as ancient Ethiopia. Ancient Ethiopia. So when we hear Cush, and we also know that Noah had a son. He had three sons, and we're going to talk about them in a moment. Cush is also known or identified as ancient Ethiopia. I'm teaching. Okay, so note that. I need you to notate that. It's going to give you understanding in times to come. And then we also have Tigris, the Tigris River. These are the four rivers that I'm naming to you. It flow east of Assyria. Assyria is now called Iraq and southern Turkey. Y'all see how real this is getting? When you study the word of God, it starts making sense. Tigris River flows through what is now called Iraq or Southern Turkey. Also located in the Middle East, which was first called Africa. So we got a whole lot of activity going on in the region continent of Africa. OK, and so I need you to I need you to get this. That the Bible has close a lot of ties with the area of Africa, okay? And this is just biblical truth. This is not something people told me and I just took their word. This comes from deep studying and wanting to know and to give people the deeper things of God. Because people are hungry for more than just shouting and, and, and jumping around everywhere because it's the truth that makes you free. I'm not against shouting. I'm not against being charismatic because I'm charismatic myself, but I still want the deeper things of God so that everything else can start making sense to me. Okay. And so then the last river you have is the river Euphrates, the river Euphrates. Okay. Euphrates is, it runs through Iraq it runs through Syria and it runs through Baghdad. Once again, you have another river that is running through the Middle East. You have another river that's running through Middle East. So, so these rivers that are mentioned in, 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 in Genesis from, from the Garden of Eden runs through Middle East. And so a lot of people have the question of where is Eden located or where was Eden located? Well, here's the answer. Eden was located in the Middle East. Okay. So, so now it makes the Bible more tangible. It makes it more real. It makes it more real because now we can locate and understand where these specific places are. And, and also to know that these are real places. These are real places. OK, so back to the term Babylon. Back to the term Babylon. The word Babel means gate of God. The term, the word Babel means gate of God. It means it means either an entry point or an exit point. When, when we're talking about gates and doors, we're talking about a place of entry or a place of exit. You're either going in a door or you're coming out of a door. And so Babel 
means gate of God. But the term is very deceptive because Babylon, the system of Babylon, wants you to believe that when you come through their gate that you will reach God. When I need you to understand that this gate only pulls you further away from God. So the term is very deceptive. You do not reach God through going through Babylon's gate. This is why a couple of weeks ago, I gave you the scriptures from the prophets that told you to run from Babylon. Flee Babylon, run from Babylon. The prophets have lost their blood. The saints have lost their blood. So this is not a place that you want to be. So flee Babylon. I need somebody to type that in. Flee Babylon or run, run from Babylon, flee Babylon. Because this is very important information for you. Y'all said y'all want the truth. I'm going to give you the truth and I hope that you can handle it. OK, so Babel means gate of God. It is either an entry point or an exit point. And I also define gate and doors. I look them both up. And gates and doors both are synonymous and mean the same thing. And they carry the same definition. It means entryway. It means admittance. It means to be admitted or it means to have access. It means to have access. So so listen, those of you who want to be successful, those of you who want to uh, to be in the elite, those of you who want to be on, the, on on that high level, you can get there. You can get there two ways. You can get there Babylon's way or you can get there God's way. To be successful, you don't have to compromise. Babylon has a system that will get you there only to suppress you. There are a lot of people that a lot of us admire, a lot of the rappers, a lot of the people who are considered the elite, they have acquired success, but they're not free. If, if you're going to be successful, you want to be successful and be free. You don't want to be caught up in a system that will make you successful only to imprison you. You don't you don't you don't want success at that rate, because when God gives you success and when God gives you wealth, he gives it to you, you know, not with problems. He gives it to you so that you can freely enjoy it. So don't so somebody needs to hear this word this morning, because some of you are starting businesses. Some of you are trying to get established and and, and, and you're struggling between doing it God's way or or compromising and doing it Babylon's way. God wants you to understand this and hear this. Do it his way and then your success will be long lived and enjoyed. Not only will you enjoy your success, but you'll have an inheritance to pass down to your children and your children's children. And so when you are dealing in the Babylon system, you might become successful for a moment. But the scripture says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his very soul? So it's time for us to have success, but have something to pass on from generation to generation. A lot of us don't we're not prepared to pass down wealth to our children because we have compromised by becoming wealthy in a wrong system. And when you become wealthy in the wrong system, your hands are tied. You're not free. God has called us to freedom. And the only thing that's going to free you is this truth that you're getting. OK, so I need you to remember you don't want to enter Babylon. You only want to exit it. You want to exit Babylon. And, and, and listen, listen, listen to me. Some of you will want to exit Babylon, but some of the people you love will want to stay. Some of you will want to leave Babylon, but some of the people that you love will want to stay. Now, this is where separation comes in. This is where separation comes in, because sometimes God will give you a desire to change your life and the people you love aren't ready yet. Whew. And just because they're not ready doesn't mean that your momentum needs to stop. I need somebody to hear that. 
Just because the people you love aren't ready to move forward in God does not mean that you need to slow down your life to wait on them to come out. Sometimes you have to be the first person in your family to get established in the truth. I'm trying to help somebody. Sometimes you have to be the first person in your family to do it. Sometimes you have to be the person in your family to break those generational curses. And so, so when God tells you to move, when I move, you move. That's what God is saying to you. When I move, you move. Okay? So let's move forward. Babylon defined. Babylon's name indicates that if you want to reach God, you have to reach him through their systems. I'm telling you now that Babylon is lying to you. The name indicates that if you want to reach God, you have to reach God through their system and their entry points. I hope. <laughs> mm. Which conflicts with what Jesus said in John 10. Are y'all are y'all with me? If you're with me, just say amen. I don't have no mu musician behind me to, to give me a tune. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm depending on the Holy Spirit to, to keep you and to keep me. OK, so I want you to look at John 10. Turn that with me. John 10 verses one and two. If you want to be free, you continue to listen to this truth. It's going to free your mind. And when your mind is free, your body can be free. If your mind is in prison, so will your body be, because wherever your mind is, your body is going to follow. So I need you to turn with me to John chapter 10. And when you on your spare time, I want you to read the whole chapter, but I'm not going to be able to, to, to break down the whole chapter right now. So I'm going to give you bits and pieces of it. John chapter 10 verse one says this. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter talking about entrance by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way. He is a thief and a robber. He is a thief and a robber. Jesus is saying that whoever comes in to teach you first, you got to come through me. Everybody that teach you has not been sent by God to teach you. And that's why you're not getting what God is saying. And let me go ahead and make some of you mad because I'm known to make a few people mad every now and then. Some of you just love to shout. That's all you want to do. You want to shout and you want somebody to make you feel good about the life that you live. You, the Bible says that in the last days that people will accumulate teachers that will tickle their ears. And so now we're living in a season, in a time span where people want their ears tickled and they don't want to hear the truth. When the Bible says plainly that it is the truth that makes you free. You know, so people are asking for truth. People have stopped going to church because they're not hearing truth. People don't want to be entertained. They want you to give them the word of God. And if they don't take the word of God, then you shake the dust off of your feet and you move on to the next city or whatever. But it's imperative because we have to stand before God and give an account for what we are teaching the people of God. So verse two says this, but he who enters... By the door is a shepherd of the sheep. So in, in essence, what God is saying, people shouldn't just have access to you. You shouldn't just you shouldn't just open your spirit and your mind up to anybody just because they're holding a Bible or just because they're holding a book or just because they're standing behind a pulpit. You must try the spirit by the spirit. OK. And Jesus goes on in verse three. He says to him, the doorkeeper opens and, 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 and the sheep hear his voice. And so he goes on to say in verse seven, he says this. No, go to verse five. A stranger, a stranger, they simply will not follow. Who is he talking about? He's talking about his sheep. He's talking about his sheep. And he says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. 
And so, and so through all of the pandemics and through all of the preaching and through all of the singing and through all of the music, it's very crucial that you are able to discern and hear the voice of God over everything. Because if you are not hearing the voice of God, you are going to be one lost person. You need to hear the voice of God. And so he says, my sheep don't follow strangers because if they're not hearing my voice, they're looking for me. OK, and so the Babylonian system is designed to deceive you. And I'm going to define all of this stuff. It's so much. And this is a hard lesson to teach. Nevertheless, I have been given the mandate and the mantle to teach this. And so I must be obedient to the spirit as he leads me. And uh, John 10, 5 says, and a stranger they will not follow, but flee from him, but flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, if somebody knocked on your door if somebody knocked on your door and you said, who is it? And you don't recognize the voice. Would you let them in your house? Of course not. If somebody knocks on your door and it's not a voice that you recognize, then you're going to be very leery and you probably will go arm yourself up because, first of all, I didn't invite you. Second of all, I don't even know your voice because people who come to my house are people that I invite. And when they come, I expect them to come. So you don't, in essence, what I'm saying is that you don't just let strangers in. So if you wouldn't let strangers in your house, why would you let a stranger in your spirit? If you wouldn't let a stranger come in your house and you wouldn't open the door for him, why would you open up your spirit to people that are not speaking God's truth? So I'm about to get to some stuff that's a little bit deeper. I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. Y'all asked for it and you got it. This is called the table of nations. We're talking about Babylon. And so when we're talking about Babylon or any topic, you got to go to, you have to go to the place where it was first mentioned. It's called the rule of first mention. Somebody type that in. It's called rule of first mention. Anytime you come across a word in the Bible, it's very wise to trace it back to the first time that it was mentioned so that you can have a better understanding of what they were saying when it was first mentioned. Because meanings and words do change over time. And so it's called the rule of first mention. OK, so I'm going to take you back to where Bab Babel was first mentioned. Genesis chapter 10. But before I start reading the scripture, I need you to write something down. Genesis chapter 10 is known as table of nations. I need that. I need that put in the comments. Table of nations. This, this chapter is going to uh, going to explain to you or show you who is who in the Bible. It's, it tells you who is who in the Bible. And that's something that people really have a strong desire to know. They want to know who is who in the Bible. <clears throat> and in order for you to know who is who, you have to go back to where it all first started. Go back to um, the table of nations. This is where all of the nations were, were split. And I'm going to explain all that stuff in a minute. It just depends on how patient you are to listen to me. OK, OK. Babel was first mentioned. The term Babel was first mentioned. I'm going to read to you chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. I want you to turn there. Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. You, you stick with me. You're going, to, you're going to start understanding the Bible. And, you're going to, and stuff is going to start making sense. Because a lot of us have been in church for so many years, but a lot of stuff just don't make sense. It's because... A lot of us aren't taking the time to sit down and study the word of God, because in order to teach the word, you have to be a student of it. And it takes time to study. And people are so busy today that we just don't take the adequate time to study. And God told me I can't be that way. OK, so. Eight through ten, listen. Now, Cush. Cush became the father of Nimrod. These names are getting ready to start making sense to you. 
Cush became the father of Nimrod. He became a, a mighty, he became mighty, um, a mighty one on the earth. He became a mighty one on the, on this earth. Verse nine says he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. It is said like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Verse 10 says this, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. There it is. The beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel and Eric and Akkad and Kelna in the land of Shinar. I'm getting ready to give you some information. I don't know how much of this I'm going to do today because I don't want to overload you with new stuff. I don't want to overload you with new stuff. This is some good information, though. OK. <laughs> oh, Lord. OK, we see where the scripture talks about Cush, right? Cush is the son. The son of Ham. OK. Cush is the son of Ham. Ham is the son of Noah. Y'all follow me. Noah had three sons after the after the earth was destroyed by water. God spared Noah. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem and Japheth. Or Japheth, because actually there was no J back then, but Japheth. OK, Cush, I need you to hear me. Cush is located in Ethiopia. Cush is located in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is in Africa. We, 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 we will keep on coming back to Africa because this is where the stuff is situated. Okay. Cush is the great grandson of Noah. I need you to type this in. Y'all can go back and, and once you start doing your fact checks, then it'll all start making sense. Cush is the grandson of No, Nimrod is the, grand, is the great grandson of, of Noah. A mighty one in the earth and a hunter before the Lord. Now, let me give you some more facts here. In verse 10, in verse 10, we, it says in the land of Shinar. Look at the end of that verse. And I want you to put in parentheses right there. That is northern and southern Babylon. Northern and Southern Babylon. Put in parentheses in your Bible, Northern and Southern Babylon. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm going to read down just a little bit further because I need you all to, to see the family ties here. The family ties. Verse 11 says this, from, the, from that land, he went forth into Assyria. We're talking about Nimrod. He went forth into Assyria and he built Nineveh. Y'all remember that place where uh, God told Jonah to go? God told him to go to Nineveh, but he went down to Joppa. That place called Nineveh was built by Nimrod. It was built by Nimrod. Nimrod was the first world leader. And he came from Africa because he's the son of Cush. All, 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 of, all, of, all this stuff is family ties. Not only did he build Nineveh, but he built Rehoboth, Kala, Cal and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala in verse 12. That is a great city. And verse 13, I know some of this stuff might be a little bit confusing to some and it may be uninteresting to others. But if you stick with me, I promise it's, it's going to eventually make sense. In verse 13, it talks about Mizraim. Mizraim. Because it says Mizraim because of the father of, he became the father of Ludim and Anam Anim and Lahabim and Naphtahim. And it goes on and it names all of this. All of these different lands. And then in verse 15, it talks about Canaan, who became the father of Sidon, his firstborn. And he all of these are descendants of Ham. That's all I'm saying. If you go back to the table. 
to the table of nations, what you will see is all of these people and all of the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, and all of these ites, all of these were, were family members. All of these people were family members. So when we start talking about the Canaanites, we're talking about all of this stuff traces back to Noah and his family. It's a whole lot to swallow, but it's a good beginning for some of you who are interested in learning uh, who's who in the Bible. Now, I want you to look at chapter 11. Chapter 11, same, same book. Whew, this is difficult to teach. It's difficult to teach. And I see why people don't teach it. Because it, it comes across as uninteresting. It, it ain't making you shout. It ain't making you dance. And that's what we're used to making people do. Chapter 11. Look at this. Verse 1. Now the whole world used, used the same language and the same words. It came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. Remember, Shinar is a.k.a. Babylon. A.k.a. Babylon. All right. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they used bricks for stones and they used tar for mortar. Verse four says, they said, come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach heaven. So Babylon start trying to build, but they were trying to build once again, a city that will reach heaven. So once again, I told you that the definition of Babylon was gate of God or gate to God. And so here in chapter 11, we see in Babylon is where they try to build a tower that will reach heaven. The, the tower known as the Tower of Babylon. OK, verse four says they said, come, let us build our for ourselves a tower whose top will reach heaven and let us make for ourselves a name. Listen. They're trying to make a name for themselves. What does Babylon promise you? The, the, the Babylon promises you a name. They promise you a name. They promise you success. They promise you that you can become a part of the elite. It's no different than what they're trying to do right here in Genesis chapter 11. So as you build legacy, you have to be careful that you are not building it on the wrong foundation. Okay. Now, listen to the rest of the verse. They wanted to make a name for themselves. Otherwise, we would be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. And verse five says this. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Now, this tower got God's attention as they're building this tower to heaven. It got God's attention. And I want you to see God's response. Verse six. The Lord said, behold, they are one people and they will all have the same language. And this is what they began to do. And now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Now, this is what he's saying. Since the people in Babylon all had the same language, it meant that they could. there was nothing impossible for them to accomplish. When people are speaking the same language, whether it is a church, whether it is an organization, whether it is a business, no matter what it is, people who are speaking the same language can build anything. And even God knew this. And so God says, hold on, they're trying to build a tower to reach heaven. And there is nothing that they cannot accomplish because they are speaking the same language. And so God says, and some of y'all, that's a word for some of you right there. You can't build anything with somebody who's not speaking the same language you're speaking. You cannot build with people because the scripture says, how can two walk together unless they agree? So you cannot build a family. You cannot build a legacy. You cannot you cannot pass down an inheritance if you're building with people who are always speaking against what you are speaking. And so in order to build, you have to talk the same language. And so the enemy knows that if he can confuse people and have them saying something different, that it will be hard to build. That's why it's hard to build churches. That's why it's hard to build the kingdom of God, because you got all these different denominations. You got all the pastors that are saying something different. And a lot of times we are diametrically opposing each other and saying something totally different. And so it's hard to build the kingdom of God if people are going to only say what they want to say. We, you can't build unless there is agreement. You cannot build where there is not agreement. 
Let me say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. You cannot build anything with people that you don't come into agreement with. And this is how Satan is able to carry out his plans for the earth, because there are people who call themselves children of God who have come into agreement with the enemy. So you cannot come into agreement with the enemy. Okay. Now, God knew that they could build anything if they were speaking the same language. That's a word for somebody. And so he so this is what God did. It wasn't Satan who confused their language. God confused their language. God confused their language because what they were building, they were building for selfish reasons. They were building for selfish reasons. They were trying to make a name for themselves and they were trying to reach heaven on their own. In essence, what I'm saying is that that they were trying to use a man made method to reach God. You cannot use a man made method or system to reach God. You cannot do that. And so God says, no, I will not allow you to reach me by your own means and methods. And so God confused their language. And guess what? They the buildings immediately stopped. Why? Because they couldn't understand each other. They could not understand each other's language. If, if So even if they needed a brick to build, they couldn't even, even understand each other language enough to say, pass me a brick. So God confused their language. So the building ceased and it stopped. OK, and verse seven says this. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language. Who's talking about father, son, Holy Spirit. Let us go down there and let us confuse their language. So they so they will not understand one another's speech. And verse eight says this. So the Lord scattered them abroad from over from there, over there, over the face of the whole earth. And they stopped building the city. And verse nine says this. Therefore, its name was called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. So at that point, they had to stop building because God confused their language. And I need you to understand this right here. And I'm almost done for today because this it, this is heavy. It, it, it's pulling a lot out of me. Um, Babylon will always try to find another way to rebuild. Babylon will always try to find a way to rebuild. And if you go back to the book of Daniel, I need you to hear me. Go back to the book of Daniel and I need you to look at chapter one. And I and, and what I want you to see in the book of Daniel is that Babylon has a recruiting process and they, they're always trying to recruit the people of God. They're always trying to recruit the people of God to build their system. They want to use our talents. They want to use our spiritual gifts to build their own systems. OK. And so I'm going to pause right there for a moment. And we talked about the physical Babylon, but I'm, I want to give you the spiritual Babylon. How do I know when I am operating in in the Babylonian system? There is a way that you can know that you are connected to the Babylonian system. God wants you to pull you from that system. One, I'm going to give you one today and then the rest of my teaching Wednesday in Bible study. I'm getting ready to get out of here. This this is heavy. Where is the spiritual Babylon? One is wherever there's idolatry. Idolatry. I'm going to define what idolatry is. You got to be tough to teach this stuff. Idolatry is excessive or blind adoration. Excessive or blind adoration. Somebody type that in. We're going to get to it, Rashid. Idolatry is excessive or blind adoration. Reverence or devotion. Excessive or blind adoration. Reverence or devotion. Some people do it to their pastors. Excessive or blind adoration reverence or devotion you're supposed to have a level of respect to for your leaders 
leaders of your country, leaders of, of your church, leaders of your community, leaders, period. But but not to the point of idolatry. Idolatry, once again, and it's very important that you write this down, is excessive or blind adoration or reverence or devotion to a person or thing. It is religious worship of idols. Religious worship of idols. Do not idolize anything. Exodus 20 verses 2 and 4 says this. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of slavery. See, I need you to understand something about God. One, I need you to understand that God will remind you of where he brought you from. God will always remind you of where he brought you from. When people bring bring up where you've been and what you've done, they do it to tear you down. When God brings up where he brought you from, he's reminding you not to go back. And he's also reminding you and he's also reminding you that that life is no longer yours. And he's also reminding you that you did not make it out on your own. Somebody need, need to hear that. Some of you are so hypocritical and, and so judgmental and, and you, you walk around and you live like a Pharisee. You're always judging other people, not understanding that it was if, if you made it out, you didn't come out on your own. The, you, you made it out because God brought you out. Yep, he brought you out. OK, and then the rest of the scripture says this. Uh, you shall have no other gods before me. Small g. You should have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. This is what God says. He's saying, don't don't make no, no idol for yourself. Don't make no idols. Don't worship no idols. Some of you have people that you idolize. You let me tell you how you know when you idolize them because you want to be everything that they are. They can make you do anything, regardless of how right or how wrong they are. You have to be careful with that. God says, I am the Lord your God. I brought you out, not them. Some of y'all are worried about people leaving you. If people leave you, thank God they left. Amen. If people walk out on you, thank God they left. You might not understand it when they leave at that moment, but you'll understand it later. So you might as well go ahead and give God praise in advance for the understanding and the revelation that he's going to give you of the people who left you. Amen. Sometimes people need to leave so that you can become everything that God wants you to be. When you when you cannot live without a specific person or a specific thing, you have idolized that thing. Some of you, I've heard people say it countless times. I can't live without them. I can't live without her. I can't live without him. I can't live without that. Man, you have idolized it. And that's why God allowed you to lose it. So that you could understand that you can live without them. You can live without that. God says, I brought you out, not them. Matthew 4.10 says this. Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Talking about idolatry. And then Isaiah 45, verse 20, and I'm going to close out on this one. Isaiah says this, gather together and come, assemble, you fugitives from the nations, he says, ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood, who pray to gods that cannot save. Who pray to gods that cannot save. He says, you're ignorant. Now, let me just go ahead and drop this word on you before I close this thing out, because I've given you a lot of information today. And if you taking notes, it's going to help you in times to come. Some of you ride around with certain um you got certain things in your house, certain things in your car, maybe certain things on your keychain. Um, 
and you feel like if you leave it or if you don't have it, then you're going to have bad luck and you're going to you can't make it without this thing hanging in your house. You've you've idolized certain things and 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 you have made it a good luck charm for you. You have made that thing your idol. You have made that thing your idol. And, and, and moving forward, I need you to understand this, that if you are making idols for yourself and you're worshiping anything other than God, then you you have become a part of the Babylonian system. You need to drop to your knees. You need to ask God for you need to ask God for forgiveness. You need to ask God for forgiveness. You need to get rid of that thing. You need to anoint your house with oil. You need those things that you call good luck charms and and good luck rabbit foot and and the things that kept you safe. Listen, you have idolized that thing and you have replaced God with a thing. And I'm telling you right now, you need to get rid of it because I need somebody to type this in as I'm getting ready to get out of here. God is enough. I need I need I need somebody to, to understand this. God is enough. God is enough. I need you to type that in. God is enough for me. I don't need no good luck rabbit foot. I don't need no certain picture hanging in my house. I don't need no certain thing hanging on the wall. God is enough for me. Because what you what you are doing, even though you might be in your house, you, you have you have set up Babylon at your own house. And I know this is not a popular teaching, but I'm going to keep on teaching. I'm going to keep on teaching. Get rid of that thing. Get rid of it. Anoint your house. God is enough. You don't need no good luck rabbit charm. You don't need you don't need all that stuff. You don't need it. Because Satan, Satan is very deceptive in how he moves and make us think we need certain stuff that we don't need. What he's trying to do is take your attention from God and put it on a thing. God is enough. I just need you to type that in. God is enough for me. Okay. And I'm going to give you a list of other things that I'm going to be discussing in in Bible study because I asked the question, how do I know that I'm a part of the Babylonian system? Okay. And I gave you the first one. Idolatry tells you that you are part of the system. And there are several other things that I want you to type in that I'm going to discuss Wednesday. Spiritual prostitution. Spiritual prostitution. Self-glorification, self-sufficiency, pride, complacency, reliance on luxury and wealth, avoidance of suffering, and violence against life. Let me give them to you again. Number one is idolatry. Number two is spiritual prostitution. You have some you have you have prostitution, spiritual prostitution that is going on in the kingdom. These are people who go from place to place, place to place, church to church, conference to conference. They go into all of this stuff and it has absolutely nothing to do with God for real. Self-glorification is number three. Self-sufficiency is number four. Pride is number five. Complacency is number six. Reliance on luxury and wealth is number seven. And there's nothing wrong with having luxury or wealth. But when you rely on it, it has become your idol. Avoidance of suffering is number eight. Jesus says, in this life, you will have tribulations. And number nine is violence against life. Violence against life. All of these things are indications of of the Babylonian system. If you look into the Babylonian system, you you will find all of what we just named. And so, and I have a responsibility to warn you. Not to get caught up in this system because once again, the prophets and the saints are losing and shedding blood in this system. And so I'm going to stop right here today. This was very heavy for me to teach. And so I'm asking you right now to go ahead and start praying for me. 
Go ahead and start praying for me because I need your prayers. I need your prayers to continue to because teaching other stuff. Now, y'all know I can flow in some other stuff, you know, because I feel like God has called me to be um, he's, he's called me to be a prophetic preacher uh, as well. You know, but in this teaching, what I'm teaching today is it's not mm, it's harder to teach this. It's easier for me to flow in the prophetic and, and to and to to do some other stuff. But um this right here is difficult and I'm going to stick to what God is placing on my heart because you all, myself, we need to know the truth about what is to come. And so God is not telling everybody that you're getting ready to get a house. God is not telling everybody you're about to get a car. God is not telling you that you can spin around seven times and it's yours. God is not telling you that you, you can reach up and just grab it. No, God is saying, I need you to look to me. He says, because if you got me, you got everything. If you have me, you have everything. The scripture says that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And so, uh, so pray for me. Um, I need everybody to share this video. But, but while you're sharing the video, I'm going to ask you, um, if you don't know God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, if you don't know him as, as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to ask you right now, you know, if you would just give your heart to God, because if you give your heart to God, he will guide the rest. You don't you don't you, listen. I understand you giving your hand to to the preacher, but you got to give your heart to God. You cannot give your heart to, to a man. You cannot give your heart to your pastor. You got to give your heart to God, because if you give your heart to him, he will guide your steps. And it's very crucial in this hour that we're in. It's a lot of stuff that is arising right now. There's a lot of people who's going to try to take advantage of your vulnerability. You know, people are vulnerable. People are hurting. And this is where a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing will begin to arise. They will begin to show up as the help when they are simply there as a wolf to tear you apart. And so it's very important that you try the spirit by the spirit, try the spirit by the spirit, because God will give you. And I need you to pray and ask God to heighten your spirit of discernment. Lord, give me the discernment to know when I am hearing your voice, because my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. You know, so once again, it is the truth that's going to make you free. And um, if you don't know him, the scripture says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. I don't care what you've done in your life. Doesn't matter how, how gross your life has been, how sinful you have been. God will cleanse you today. He will wipe your history away, but you must come to him. The, the Babylonian system cannot save you. Jesus, that's why he gave his life. That's why he went up that hill called Golgotha. That's why he hung on that cross. That's why he was nailed between two thieves so that you can be saved. That's why when he died on the third day, he rose with all power in his hand because when he got up, guess what? That's a clear indication today that you can get up too. You don't have to die in the situation that you're in. God will free you from that, but you must turn to him. You must turn to him. You cannot get to heaven building your own tower. You cannot get to heaven the way you want to get there. You cannot get there doing what they did in uh, Genesis chapter 11. That's why God confused their language so they can stop building. You don't have to build when God has already, he's already paved the way for you. All you have to do is turn to Jesus. He is the answer. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's, that's what he said, his own declaration in John 14, 6. And so um, if that is you today, all you have to simply do is just ask him to come in. You don't have to do all those famous prayers. As a matter of fact, there is nothing in the Bible where anybody has ever repeated a prayer after somebody else to get saved. The Bible says that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved for with the heart. The person believes, but with the mouth, they confess unto salvation. And so there it is. 
And so all you have to do is turn to him. Be, I need you to be aware of that system, that Babylonian system. I'm going to teach you more about it. And you're going to start understanding who is who in the Bible. That's very important. I need you to know who is who so you can find yourself in there. You know, so, uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to pray us out. And those of you who are going to, um, who want to become a part of our church, you can do that by inboxing. And I will send your information to who it needs to come because we are growing a virtual church uh, we've had people to join. We thank God for you all for tuning in because we know um, that we miss seeing each other, but we just have to do what we have to do until we can do what we can or what we want to. So um, let me pray us out. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for these, your people who logged in, God, who's anxious and willing to hear your word. God, they want to learn the truth and they want to be free mentally and physically. I pray, God, that you would pull us out of this system and that you would help us to understand that the only system we need to live in is yours. And you have a kingdom agenda that is assigned to all of our lives. God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for exposing uh, this Babylonian system, God, and showing us that it is not for us. And I pray, God, your blessings over every person who has tuned in, every person who has taken notes, every person who desires to grow. I pray that you would give them what they seek, God. The Bible says, uh, ask and it shall be given. You know, seek and we shall find, knock and the door shall be open. So we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the promises of God. We thank you for covering us, keeping us. We thank you for protecting us from COVID-19. We thank you, God, for uh, allowing us to survive storms and tornadoes. We thank you, God, that we are resilient people. We thank you for your chosen people, the children of Israel. We thank you, God, for um, calling us out and, and letting us and reminding us that we are a called out, a chosen na nation. Uh, God, I pray uh, for healing in the land. I pray that your people will look to you, turn to you, turn from this our wicked ways, uh, that you may heal our land, God. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for just being who you are. We thank you for being the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we give you all the honor, the praise, and glory for providing everything that we need during the time that we need it. You may not come when we want you to come, but you're always on time, and we thank you for that. And so we love you. We give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so if you're going to give, of course, you can text. Um, you can you can give by texting uh, 301-5545. Text give to that number. You can cash app Inner Peace Church, or you can go to our website, which is www.innerpeacechurch.org, and you can give that way. Uh, so we thank all of you for your contribution. We thank you for just being a part of, of who we are. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, we love you all, and I certainly miss seeing the people in church, and I'm excited for what God is going to do when we get back in the house. Uh, we are going to be a learned people. We will not be ignorant. We, are, we will not just be going to church, just going through the motions, uh, you know, because there's so much more that God wants to do for us. But in order for us to even see it, we got to start learning his word. And I pray that God will give you an appetite for truth because these days people don't have uh, people don't have the patience. They don't they don't like to it, to be taught is too much like school to some people. And that's why we're ignorant. The scripture says we perish because we lack understanding and we lack knowledge. You know, so um, ask God to increase your appetite for teaching, not just preaching, but teaching. Ask God to increase your appetite, because if you stick with me, you're going to learn some stuff that you probably haven't heard because I'm learning stuff. I'm learning. I'm growing. Although I'm a pastor of a, of a, of a lovely church, I am still growing as a man of God, I am still growing as a pastor. And the more I study, the more truth I am running into. And as God reveals it to me, I am under obligation to reveal it to you. And so I'm going to do it no matter what it costs. You know, so continue to pray for me, for my strength, uh, for our church, for our families. Uh, continue to pray for our communities. And, and we're going to um, do what we have to do to make sure that we are good. You know, so I love you all. Uh, and I pray that God's peace uh, rest upon you and your families. In Jesus' name, I'm PK. I love you. I'm out of here.